Hello, I'm Heather Wong with the Bellevue Fire Department. Today we're sharing some tips to help you survive a fire or other emergency when you need to evacuate a building or find a safe alternative. There are several types of emergencies that may require emergency evacuation, such as a fire. Of course, we are all familiar with an alarm going off and being told we should evacuate. If you can safely evacuate, you should do so. There are some things you should consider ahead of time, such as where you are. Are you in a commercial building, at home, or in another space, such as a hotel? Wherever you are, take time to plan what you will do. Plan your escape routes and route alternatives before an emergency happens. Though it is often best to evacuate in an emergency, there are some situations when sheltering in place is the best option. People who use wheelchairs, other people with limited mobility due to age, overall health or injury, or anyone without access to an escape route should consider sheltering in place. It is critical that we highlight the fact that if you cannot safely and efficiently exit a building, it actually may be safer for you to shelter in place than try to exit. Even if you don't consider yourself to be disabled, if you have to struggle to get down the stairs for any reason, it not only poses a risk to you, it poses a risk to other people trying to evacuate and impedes the first responders. If sheltering in place is your best option, we will show you how easy it is in just a minute. But first, whether you will evacuate or decide to shelter in place, there are some things that everyone can do to increase their odds of survival. Have working smoke alarms. Have sprinklers. Did you know that the risk of dying in a fire decreases by 81% if your building is equipped with fire sprinklers? Always sleep with your bedroom door closed. This is to prevent fire from entering and also to block the smoke. This is important because smoke inhalation causes more deaths than fire itself. See two rooms in the same house fire. The room on the left was a room with the door open. The room on the right had the door closed. Know the address where you are, whether you're at work, home, or visiting someplace else. Plan your best options, escape routes, or whether you plan to shelter in place. Communicate your plans with others, including your coworkers, other household members, friends, family. Know when and how you plan to reunite if you are separated from others. Keep emergency contact information up to date and have out-of-state contacts on the list in case local lines are too overwhelmed. These are a few tips everyone can follow to help you stay safe in an emergency. Now that I've shared some general tips for emergencies and talked about when sheltering in place may be the very best option for survival, we wanna share just how to do this. To help with this, I want to introduce you to Blaine Amson, the Americans with Disabilities Act and Title VI Civil Rights Administrator for the city of Bellevue. Blaine is here to share more about why sheltering in place is a great option and take us through how to shelter in place effectively. Thank you so much, Heather. I am so excited to be here. I wanted to share this information with you today because ensuring that people with disabilities have access isn't just my job. As you can see, I use a wheelchair. And I also live in a high-rise condominium. What I've learned about sheltering in place has been extremely reassuring to me, and I want to pass along this great information. Sheltering in place is really easy, but it will work best if you plan ahead whenever possible. By creating and practicing my own shelter in place plan and sharing it with the people around me, I breathe a little bit easier knowing that even in situations as hectic as a fire alarm, I am still in control of my own safety. The first thing you need to know is where you're located. What is the address of the building you're in, home or office, and where exactly in the building are you going to be sheltering in place? Obviously, this can change depending on the emergency, but scope out a good spot where you may be most safe and comfortable while you wait for help to arrive. In my home, I often shelter in place in my bedroom. When I'm at work at City Hall, my plan is to go to the stairwell. Tell people around you what your plans to shelter in place are and make sure they understand your plan, where you will go during the emergency, what you'll do when you get there, and after you've safely evacuated and what everyone else will do. My family knows that I will stay in place, where I will be, and that they will exit and maintain contact with me via text. Next, you're gonna take action. When you hear an alarm go off, 
Call 911 to report your need to shelter in place and share your location with the dispatcher. Remember to remain calm and be prepared to share that you are in a building you cannot safely evacuate from and that the alarm is going off. The 911 dispatcher will likely ask you follow-up questions. Answer those questions and follow all instructions. In case of a fire, I always close the doors to the room I'm in and you should too. Close your doors to block smoke from entering the room. Keep your phone on and near you, which of course you've kept charged just in case of an emergency. And then shelter in place and stay in the location that you reported to 911 and wait for assistance, unless you're in immediate danger. If you need to change your location in order to remain safe, be sure to call 911 again and report your new location. If I am at home, I let 911 know that I'm in the condo on the northwest corner of the building and that the room I'm sheltering in has windows right behind the patio, which are easily accessed from the street. That's really all there is to it, Heather. Yep. I can't tell you how much better I feel knowing that I'm prepared for an emergency. I've told you my shelter in place plan. Take some time to think about your own and share it with those that you live with. Having one in place is a weight off my mind, and I hope you'll feel better about it once you have your own. Thank you, Blaine. You bet. Being prepared can literally be the difference between life and death. So please remember these tips. Make a plan, share your plan, follow your plan, and survive. For more tips on preparing for emergencies, please visit fire.bellevuewa.gov.